Hey everyone, we are on the Virginia Dare Memorial Bridge, named after the first English-born child here in the New World on August 18th, 1587. This bridge is the longest one in North Carolina, and we are driving over the Croatan Sound. And it takes you to the Outer Banks. That's where we're going. Come on. Let's go. So babe, what are the Outer Banks? Well, they're also known as OBX. That is their abbreviation, and they are a big tourist destination. But in a nutshell, it's just a huge sandbar that has created a series of barrier islands about 175 miles long, with the narrowest part being 150 yards wide. That's one and a half football fields on. Wow. <laughs> now, the only way to get out to the island is by bridge or by ferry. Well, for now, anyway. <laughs> Now, for those of you that didn't know it, the Outer Banks are moving. Remember, we said it's just a huge sandbar that's not permanently attached to any land. So as the storms and waves blow over the Outer Banks, it picks up the sand on the Atlantic side and drops it off over on the Sound side. We have actually read that the Outer Banks used to be located 15 to 40 miles further east, and they're moving west. Now, if you have any plans to visit during your lifetime, don't worry about it. They should still be here. It's a slow process. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to cruise down through the Cape Hatteras National Seashore. Go check a couple of things out. We're going to take you with us. Let's go. All right, guys. Sean and I were traveling down Route 12 here in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. I saw something shiny on the side of the road. It was a spaceship. We're being invaded by aliens. 2020 just won't quit. <laughs> what you're looking at is a Futura house. Yeah, the company started making them in 1968. They made 100 of them, sold them worldwide. There's about 19 that are still here in the United States. They sold them for $18,000, designed them for a family of four, 520 square feet of living space. They made them out of plastic and fiberglass, which made them lightweight and easy to move. Now the house you're looking at here was purchased in 1972, and it was placed as an ocean beach cottage right here on Hatteras Island. When a couple was done using it, they donated it to the local fire department, who in turn had an auction so they could raise some money. Since that time, the Boy Scouts have used it, the Girl Scouts have used it. There was a newspaper called The Monitor that used it, and it was purchased by the Frisco Campground. They put it right out in front, right there along the road. They were selling hot dogs out of it, and they called the stand Footlong Out of This World Hot Dog Stand. Now, as you can tell, this one here is a roadside attraction. It is the second most viewed thing here on the island after the lighthouse. And speaking of that lighthouse, welcome to the Cape Hatteras Light Station. It is the tallest brick lighthouse in America and the second tallest in the world. It comes in at 198 and a half feet tall. And there are 257 steps to climb, but it's been closed for the season due to COVID. Now the purpose of a lighthouse is to assist sailors in navigating, especially right here off of Cape Hatteras due to the treacherous diamond shoals. This lighthouse was moved back from the shore 2,900 feet in 1999 to avoid erosion. That's just another reminder that the Outer Banks are moving. Lighthouses are painted with distinctive markings, such as the one right here with the white and black striping. Those are called day marks. It's a navigational aid for daytime. And in case you're wondering, it takes 140 to 150 gallons of paint to make this lighthouse look like this. <laughs> now this is just one of four lighthouses here on the Outer Banks, and we'll be showing you one more of them today. Let's go. Welcome to the Bodie Island Light Station. This is one of three original lighthouses. The first one was 54 feet tall and opened in 1848. But 10 years later, due to poor construction, it started leaning and was replaced. Yeah, then the second one was 80 feet tall and it was completed in 1859. And all was good until the Civil War broke out. Then the Confederate Army blew it up because they were afraid the Union Army was going to get a hold of it and use it as a lookout. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now the one you're looking at here is 156 feet tall and it was first used in 1872. And speaking about lighthouses being used for lookouts during a war, this one was used during World War II. Yeah, the Navy used the tower as a lookout for German U-boats. That will bring an end to our lighthouse adventure today. Babe, you want to go get a taste of the desert here on the East Coast? Sure, let's go. Welcome to Jockey Ridge State Park. Yes, this was established in 1975. It's 420 acres in size, and it is completely free to visit. And it's those shadow people again. Looks like they brought their dog with them this time. <laughs> Jockey Ridge is home to the East Coast's tallest living sand dune, which varies in size from 60 to 80 feet, depending on the wind and depending where you do your research, because I also heard that it could go up to 110 feet. But speaking about the wind, if anyone ever tells you to go fly a kite, you should come here because it's a perfect place to do it. It's also a premier place for hand gliding. You don't know how to hand glide? Don't worry. They have school here that will teach you how to do it, but that's not free. <laughs> 
how the ridge got its name is possibly a legend, and it goes like this. The early settlers caught wild horses from the shipwrecks in the area. They tamed them, then a jockey would race them at the base of the dunes while the spectators watched them from the dunes and bet on the outcome. Now, how much money do you think was exchanged there? <laughs> Hey, are you getting sand in your shoes? I am. I am. <laughs> but hey, speaking of the dunes and the sand, what do you think is under them? Well, there's sand, there's fact, and there's legends. Supposedly, people have lost their homes to the dune. It just, well, remember, it's constantly moving here. It just came along and kind of ate it up. Supposedly, there was a high-class hotel that was built on the edge of the dune that is now in the belly of the dune. Wow. Now, if you have a nice hotel, you need some activities, right? Yeah, a little bit. How about a miniature golf course? Ooh. How about from, say, the late 70s to, you know, 80s? Now, depending on what time you come here, you may be able to find out which of these is the actual fact. We got lucky. Yes, that is a castle from the miniature golf course. How cool is that? It is cool. And it looks like they've been digging it out, but that's really just the wind that's doing that. And if the wind can dig it out, it can fill it back in. We were lucky today to see this. Yeah, and as you can see, they, they put the fence up around it trying to save it, but those fences are getting um, covered in sand too. <laughs> so anyway, that should bring this to about, oh no, hey, let's go to the top of the dune right now. Okay. And we'll, we'll do a pan up there. We are on the top of the dune right now. What are we looking at over there, dudes? We are looking at the Roanoke Sound. And the land over there is the coastline of North Carolina. Yeah, and as we start to pan up to the north, you ever heard of the Wright brothers? Mm -hmm. oh, they were kind of famous, right? Mm -hmm. They are nine minutes from here. <laughs> you can go up and see where Oval and Wilbur walked into the history books with their first successful manned flight. And yes, we will be covering that, but not in this video. As we continue to pan, what body of water do you think that is, hon? That would be the Atlantic. Yeah, that is the Atlantic Ocean. So it's pretty cool up here. Uh, definitely a good tourist stop. It reminds me of California and the desert. So, but that will bring this to an end. We have one more place we're gonna take you before we leave the Outer Banks for today. We are now at Digger's Dungeon, home of Grave Digger, the most decorated monster truck in the world. And I gotta tell you, this is more than just a gift shop. There were 41 grave diggers that have been built, and some on display here, such as... This replica of the first grave digger ever. But this one was built for mud bogging, then later it was transformed into a monster truck, Grave Digger 1, also called Grandma. And hun, does it look like she has teeth? Scary teeth. <laughs> they also told us now that this grave digger here is the one that owner Dennis Anderson drove across the Currituck Sound in a charity event in 1994. He spent seven to eight hours driving a monster truck in the water. How cool is that, hun? That is cool. There is a petting zoo for the kiddos. And apparently the animals get to go over obstacles just like the monster trucks do here. This is cool. <laughs> if you have little monster truck drivers in your family, they're gonna love it here because there's a course that they can drive grave digger monster trucks their size on. Check it out. There's even a digger's diner. Got a lot going on here. There's the diner. Oh, we could have brought Maggie here to Grave Digger's Dungeon. RV parking. <laughs> and we could have run around the course over there. What do you think? You think she should make it? I don't think so. Come on, we'll put some knobby tires on. It should be fine. <laughs> uh, Cheryl and I are cheap, but we are sorry that that's not open today because we would have paid to go for a ride in a monster truck. Definitely. And in the gift shop, there was all sorts of things that you and your kids would really, really get a kick out of. Check it out. Very cool. Now that's what I call a wagon. Cheryl found a store mascot. <laughs> Besides the merchandise available here in the gift shop, you can also see the awards that Gravedigger has won over the years, along with pieces of past Gravediggers from, well, various competitions. All right, well, there you go. Day one of our adventures on the Outer Banks, and I had a ball. How about you? I did, too. There's so much more to see there, but that was five things that we got to do. Yeah, and the one thing that would have really put it over the top for me, and I'm pretty sure for Cheryl too, was if the monster truck ride at 
Digger's Dungeon had been open and Oh operating. yeah, that would have been cool. But you know what, when you're full time, this is one of the situations that you run into. You're going to get places where something is closed for one reason or another. But then, on the other hand, there was nobody on the Outer Banks. We owned the place. No crowds at all. <laughs> so that was great. Uh, uh, we got anything else we need to talk about? I don't about? think so. Alright then, if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing and where we are, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. And if you like what you saw today, we'd appreciate that thumbs up as always. If you want to become part of the Grow and Get Gone again, right down there in the corner, just click it and you're in. And after you subscribe, click the bell too and you'll be notified every time we put out a new video. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them right down below or you could just say hi. Because we'll say hi back, we always do. Until our next video, I'm Chuck. And I'm Cheryl. We're Get Gone with us. Bye. Bye.